In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, I've got a returning guest. This gentleman has been with us now. This will be the third interview, the third. Yeah, number three, as far as him showing up and being a guest here on the podcast, which I'm super excited. Uh, Today, I have with us Greg Young. And Greg's and I have really gotten very close, meaning over the last, it's probably been close to two years, has it not been Mm -hmm. now, Greg? Probably close to two years? that uh, we've been connected and getting connected even more all the time. We have our own little uh, mastermind. We were chatting before we hit record today about just stuff, right? We just bounce ideas off of each other, but then we also were there to support and help each other too uh, in the life's uh, ups and downs. And uh, I don't want to portray that my life is up all the time because it is not. And I would assume Greg probably feels the same way. So at the same time, we're there to support each other and help each other. But anyways, uh, Greg is down in the uh, Tampa Bay area. Uh, he, I know he lives in a, a city or a town outside of Tampa Bay, but uh, just for <laughs> geographical ideas, it's down in that Tampa Bay area. Uh, him and his wife, Mandy, uh, their dog, Buster, correct? Mm-hmm. The dog Buster. Yeah. Stacy, my wife and I, we were fortunate enough to go down and visit Greg and Mandy and met Buster. It was, uh, it was a fun time. But anyways, excited to have this conversation. We don't know exactly where it's going to go today, to be quite honest with you. As I mentioned, we communicate. Right now, we're on about an every other week time frame to communicate with each other. And there for the longest time, for about a year, we were almost communicating every single week, which was fun. But this was, we thought, would hey, let's just jump on. Let's hit record. Let's just have a conversation, a real conversation about life, testing, kind of navigating life itself. And uh, let's just see where this one goes. But so without further ado, Greg, man, welcome to your third time. Number three, you are Number like, three. yeah, I've had, I think one other person, Dan Armstrong has been on twice. And so, yeah, I'll have to get hold of Dan and say, Hey man, we're, we're beating you out over here. Anyways, I'll, I'll yeah, be quiet some tough competition, but no, thank you yeah. for having me, Randy. It's always a pleasure to be on here, man. Yeah. So I went through, told them everybody where you live. Tell me again, where that town is outside of Tampa that you live in. Uh, it's a little town called Parish. Parish. I, I, yeah, that anyways, I'm not even going to act like I, that came to my mind. I knew it was different <laughs> and I just couldn't think of exactly what it was, but yeah, it's just South of Tampa, which is a beautiful area down that way. So why don't you take a quick second, just in case somebody didn't catch the previous two episodes and just give the 30,000 foot view, get everybody a chance to get to know Greg a little bit better. Yeah, sure. So I'll just kind of start with, I guess, the professional side. Um, You know, I've been a real estate investor since 2010, Um, started with single families like most people do. And um, I was actually a realtor when I lived back in Arizona for about six years. So it was kind of fun marrying um, the active with the investing. Um, So it was kind of cool seeing both sides of that. Um, And like Randy said, you know, I moved to Tampa about two years ago with my wife. Um, So I didn't renew my license or transfer my license to Florida. So I'm no longer a realtor. I'm just doing real estate investing full time, which has been like Randy and I were talking about before ups and downs. Um, You know, life is not perfect. It never will be. Um, So I'm just trying to navigate working full time and, um, you know, not having that uh, that realtor kind of uh, flow or cadence, if you will. So trying to figure out my day to day, what that looks like. Financially, mindset-wise, socially, um, it was it was a big change. So we, you know, we can dive into that if you want. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the the thirty thousand overfoot view of uh, me and what I've been doing the last 10, 12 years. I love it. So yeah, I think let's let's dive into that because the reason why I say that is uh, the day that we're recording this. Uh, I don't even know what the date is. It's today, the eleventh of June. Uh, the episode that dropped today, uh, Kevin Palmieri. Uh, was a great conversation that he and I had. And we talked about early stage entrepreneurship and the challenges of early stage entrepreneurship of the challenges, the unknowns, the ups, the downs, the personal development that's required, the personal growth that's required to keep going when things aren't going well. Yeah. I think that maybe that would be uh, a good thing for you and I maybe to discuss because we have those conversations, as I mentioned about every, every week, every other week, 
let's maybe help some folks out there that are maybe struggling in their current W-2 job and they're considering jumping into this entrepreneurial world, but they're a little bit fearful and rightly so. But at the same time, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, maybe let's let's dive down that road a little bit. I know you and I have both had different experiences, but at the same time, we both have similar challenges as well. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no one straight path up to entrepreneurship. I think you would, a lot of people would agree with that. Um, it's very rare that you just kind of take off and everything is sunshine and rainbows because um, it's not. So we can definitely start with the mindset piece. I know, obviously, um, you know, we met in a mastermind that was really driven with mindset. Um, and that was the first time in my life back in 2019 that I even put two and two together and realized I need to focus on mindset, understand what it is and dive into it. Um, and I think that's why you and I connect so well, but mindset, I'm realizing the further I get into it, um, it is, it's work, right? You really have to work at mindset. It's not something that you achieve and you get a certificate. And then all of a sudden you have this mindset and it's with you for the rest of your life. I wish it was that easy, but at least for me, it's not, you know, you don't wake up every day. At least I don't, you know, I have to kind of train myself and remind myself and, you know, that's why we listen to podcasts and read books constantly. At least I do, because I need that reminder of, yeah, I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing. Even though, like you said, there's a lot of fear behind it. Um, there's a lot of anxiety behind it sometimes, and you're definitely out of your comfort zone a lot of the time. Um, and you have to, you know, face that or, you know, realize that that might not be your path, but if it is your path, understand exactly what that looks like. Um, talk to other people who've been down that road and really decide if that is going to be the step that you want to take to move forward. So for me, the recommendation, so I agree with everything you just said, hundred percent, it's, it's mindset. So the hardest piece and the hardest work, I've said this on the podcast before, has been working on myself and in my internal thoughts and then in my internal feelings, which then it, it, you know, attaches to the actions that I take. I was literally just on a, I was walking, taking a walk this morning um, and I was practicing, meaning I was, I didn't have my earbuds in. I wasn't listening. A lot of times I'll listen to things when I'm on my walk, to almost distracting, but today I wanted to... Uh, just practice a little bit, practice catching myself in my, in my thoughts, meaning I was having some not necessarily positive thoughts going on in my mind with what's going on in, the, in my personal life and my personal world, but I was trying to catch them and, and notice them and then re, be able to have the ability to respond to them in my own mind. It might sound a little weird, but it's like, but if I don't do that work, it's like practice. It, it's literally the hardest work I've ever done, I believe, right? And, I'm, <laughs> and so I, I've done some physical labor. I've bailed, bailed hay in the back of the day. Obviously, I, I've cut grass and sweltering heat. I mean, it's like I've done physical labor. But it's like it's the most challenging part to take control or work towards taking control of that mindset piece. But I will tell you that if I don't work on it literally every day. So as I mentioned, I was literally just working on it this morning. I need to work on it a little bit more after we jump off this call. I need to, it's just a continuous process that if, if people today, if you're listening to us today, if you're not willing to go down that road, to go down that path of that personal growth with, from within, I say on the podcast that you've got to work towards winning within. And what I mean by that is that if you don't, if you don't take the internal thoughts, the internal feelings. If you don't start paying attention to what's going on in the inside of you, a lot of times, this has been my experience, the outside world will not match up uh, and vice versa. That's been my experience. I've even seen it and I've witnessed it with, with other people. I was having a conversation with my wife this morning. There's a gentleman that I just turned 50 just for context. There's a gentleman that is in our, our environment. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, he might be a friend. I don't know what you want to call him, but we're just aware of him. And he's uh, early fifties as well. And he seems to be ill and sick a lot, not feeling well. And I told my wife this morning that I would bet a lot of that has to do with he's just got a lot of, lot of mental anxiety going on. He's a very stressed guy. Like he's a businessman, right? So he's, he's always go, go, go. He's in this entrepreneurial world. It just doesn't stop. And he's, he, you can tell that he's like mentally drained which when he's becoming mentally drained, it's, it's starting to show up as a reflection in his outside world as far as an illness. Like he's, he's sick most of the time. That's a clue. That's a sign. That's my opinion. I'm going to stop there. Do you have an opinion on that at all, Greg? 
Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I can kind of speak from, you know, personal experience uh, you know, during COVID. Um, you know, obviously that was a tough situation for us all. Um, and, you know, during that time, two months after my father passed away, so it was even a rougher time. Um, and, uh, you know, I was in a really, you know, just a, a bad place with um, anxiety and fear and not knowing what the world was going to, you know, look like. Uh, not knowing what my role was going to look like without my father. So there was, you know, I, I admit it. I was like very anxious. Uh, I made some rash decisions that I probably shouldn't have made um, with my real estates. Um, looking back on it now, I'm like, yeah, I, sh I made that decision because like you said, I wasn't really committed or focused on working on myself at that point. I was just so ridden with grief and anxiety and the world is ending and all this stuff. And it really just caused me to lose focus and, um, kind of got derailed for a little bit there. And um, like you said, you have to focus on yourself, you know, win from within, like you said. And I love that phrase. Um, you, that's where it all starts because, you know, the outside world doesn't really matter all that much as much or as much as I thought it would uh, matter in my life. You know, it's just like you said, you have to win from within. And if you're not happy with yourself mentally, physically, you know, your health, your nutrition, whatever that looks like for you, you're just going to lose the game and you're not going to feel mentally sharp. You're not going to want to show up and hang out with friends. And these are all things that I experienced during that time. And looking back on it, it's easy to see, but when you're in it, it is harder to see. Maybe you see it, but you really don't find a way out of it. So, so yeah, that's where mindset and personal development really have been flowed for me. And now I'm trying to make it very consistent where it's growth every day, whether it's, you know, very small growth or reminding myself of a podcast that I listened to last week what was the message from that one? How can I put that into my day to day? Because I do that a lot. I listen to podcasts sometimes twice just to have it in my brain and kind of, you know, just swimming around there. And then all of a sudden it'll, you know, it'll sink in for me. So, so that's just me anyway, but um, just losing focus and regaining focus has been probably a good theme of mine for, um, like I said, during that COVID period, maybe that, that six months where I was just kind of, uh, I don't know, just kind of lost a little bit, to be honest. So I, knowing you and tell me if I'm incorrect, right. But you're a routine. You're pretty much a, a solid, you, 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 your ability to commit to a routine and follow through is, is amazing to me. So congratulations on the, your ability to do that with your nutrition, with your habits, with all of these things. I, I, I love it. So I just admire everything you do with that. So you mentioned about podcast. Is there any other part of your routine that you've discovered? Cause that you're, you're changing it and trying different things. It appears based on the conversations that we have often, right? You're trying new things. Is there anything that you've done even after COVID, right? Going through that process for yourself with the grieving of your father and that type of thing. Is there anything that you've done even recently that has really moved a needle for you as far as in a routine to kind of help you get some of that focus back? Yeah. So that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. And you actually mentioned it earlier about going for a walk. Um, when Manny and I moved to Florida, that was one of the things that, um, you know, her and I focused on where we would go for walks um, and now I go for a walk every single day, like pretty much rain or shine. Um, sometimes I'll do two walks in a day just to um, kind of clear my head. Uh, you know, I do one right in the morning after I walk my dog. I just kind of head out of the house and get my, um, just kind of get my thoughts organized, my day organized. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll listen to a podcast, other times music. Sometimes I'll just take nothing and just walk in, you know, my neighborhood and nature and everything, which is really cool. But that's one like non-negotiable habit that, I will not give up. Um, it's kind of like, cause I've tried meditation before where, you know, you sit in the chair and you don't think of anything, but thoughts flow anyway. And, um, so I was trying to dive into that and I don't think you can do meditation wrong or right, but it just didn't really connect with me. And then I realized this probably about a month ago, I said, my morning meditation is my morning walk. Mm. And that works for me. Just getting out in nature, having the sun hit my, you know, my face, and especially here in Florida, usually the weather is pretty nice right now. It's a little bit muggy, but it's still good to get out there and just, you know, kind of get away from the home office because my wife and I, we both work from home. So it's nice to, you know, just kind of get out there and have my own thoughts to myself and, and start the day that way. And sometimes I'll even end the day that way around like four thirty, five o'clock just to get my steps in and just to, you know, see neighbors and, just not think about work and staring at the computer all day, which, you know, a lot of us do and rightfully so, but, um, I just need to break away like that. 
Love that. So when I was thinking, when you just said that, as far as the meditation piece, that's, that's basically what I was doing on today's walk. I was really trying to be in a conscious state of catching my thoughts as they were coming and going. I would ebb and flow out of some negative thoughts back into catching it and questioning it. Why am I thinking that? Stop thinking that. <laughs> and then, and then focusing on, so today is a perfectly clear sky. It's like 50, five degrees outside, which I know is cool compared to, you know, I'm sure it's probably 70 or 80 down there in Florida, but here in Indiana, it's just a beautiful spring day. And yeah, I was catching myself going from my negative thoughts and turning to gratitude of the beautiful sky. The birds were singing today. We've got a, a, <laughs> it's going to sound silly, but we've got ducks in our pond here in our uh, neighborhood. And it's a male and a female, and they're just hanging out, just doing what they do, right? Waddling around. And I was just paying attention to that. Just the, mm -hmm. like I said, I knew that was going to sound silly, but at the same time, that, those were the things I was trying to take my mind off of. The negative things that are going on in my life, as I mentioned, I know we all have different things, uh, but bringing it back into more of a gratitude state of mind and mindset. Um, I loved how you said that as far as, and I never really thought about it being a meditative state. But in reality, because I've tried meditation as well, a lot of times I will do like a guided meditation. I have an app that guides me. Uh, I plug it ear, earbuds in my ears and I'll just re, uh, lay back and close my eyes. And it's a guided meditation, which helps me with my thoughts, right? They don't wander as much. But today, that was that was a, a lot of fun for myself. So I appreciate you saying that. That was, that was good. See, folks, these are the kind of conversations Greg and I have every week, <laughs> which is why it's so much fun. So... Let me ask you, I know you uh, are uh, in proximity to some high achievers. And when I say high achievers, I mean high net worth individuals. They're out there crushing it in the world. We, we kind of started off talking about entrepreneurial stuff here with the beginning of the episode. Help me. So this is really a question I have for myself, and I think that might be valuable for others, listeners as well. Help me because I have the issue with myself of the achievement piece of me that wants to get more stuff, get more things, get more status, get more, you put the, get, you could put whatever you want on the end of the get more piece mm -hmm. versus the, the happiness, the joy, the taking time for your walks every day. It's like you said, it's a non-negotiable for you. For me, the weather is a little bit cha challenging sometimes in the winter for me, but I try to get out there multiple times per week as well. But when you take yourself away from the achieving piece to take care of yourself, Sometimes that's where I struggle in my own mind. I feel like I should be doing something more to achieve versus working on myself and my own mindset to try to move the, the needle forward. I don't know if there's a question in there or not, but I'm just curious on if there's you know any thoughts with, with that, right? How you, how you differentiate the difference between the achieving piece versus the mindset working on yourself piece. Yeah, no, that's a great, you know, setup there cuz I think there is a differentiation there for sure and I think a lot of people do kind of, you know, want the things, right? You know, the house, the car, whatever that looks like. Um which is great. You know, we all have things that we want and some people want that car and house and other people they really don't want that. They want, you know, the connectivity with the community or the family or giving back and it's not to say that you can't have both. You can still have, you know, the house in the Caribbean and also give back to your community um, time wise or money. But I think it's just a matter of figuring out um, what's going to make you really happy. You know, and you and I've talked about this with uh, classic cars, right? Cause I know you're a classic car guy and um, you know, I, I kind of like them a little bit, but not enough to really um, maybe I'll buy one one day. I don't think I'll ever, I ever will. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> not unless I buy it. I, I'll, I'll quote unquote buy it for you and I'll, you I'll drive it to your house I'll drive it everywhere, right? It'll be in your name. Yep. Anyways, it'll twist I, my arm I, for I sure. Just, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you 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 put up the funds. I'll buy it for you. How's that sound? But anyways, <laughs> I got distracted. Please continue. <laughs> but yeah, no. So it's it's just one of those things where you know, especially as a kid and even as a an adult, I always thought, yeah, I wanted a muscle car and I wanted this kind of house and I wanted you know all these things. And now you know I'm 44. If I get those things, great. You know, it would be, it'd be cool to have one, but it's not going to make me happy, right? It's not going to, it's going to contribute to my happiness most likely, but I'm not going to wake up the next morning and be like, oh, cool. Like I have a Chevelle in my driveway. Now I've achieved everything. I'm the happiest man in the world. It's because then it's like, what's next, you know, but now I have a Chevelle. Do I want to get something else? But I, my mindset is more on, and you know, this is more on health and nutrition 
because of what I've, you know, experienced in the past with my health and nutrition. Luckily it wasn't uh, very bad, but it was a, a big enough wake up call where I had to be like, all right, let's, let's get the health in order because without that, um, you know, having a car and house, it doesn't really matter. So that was one of the things that really focused me back in 21 um, when I had my health issue is it, it'll be great if I have a car and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm not around to enjoy it or I'm, not, I'm able to go to the beach, but I can't, you know, ride the zip line because I'm too heavy. What's the point of going to the beach? You know what I mean? So um, just getting my priorities in line and everybody kind of has to take inventory and take stock of what's your priority. And that'll drive you to um, what you want in life, whether it's a car or health and nutrition or community. Like I said, it could be all three of those things. It's just a matter of, you know, what you want to go after and kind of what ratio you want to, you want to weigh those three things on in that example. So I think stress can be a huge turret to health. And I mentioned about the gentleman earlier that is, you can just tell he's just stressed to the max where he's just not physically able to show up and be his true self because he's, he's literally stressed. We all deal with stress. I know you do too, Greg. Is there any, you talked about, you know, taking your walks and that type of thing. Is there anything that you do to try to help yourself get through the stressful times in life, whether it's a business challenge or even just a, a you, you mentioned about your uh, health challenge. And we talked a lot about that in a previous episode. And maybe you can even name what it was because I don't even try to, it's a, it's a thing that you had that I don't even want to try to pronounce it because I'll mess it up. But yeah, as far as like just dealing with that stress, can you talk about how some things that you do, maybe even beyond your walks, get beyond that for yourself? Yeah. So for me, um, and what I had back in 21 was diverticulitis, basically just diverticulitis. my digestion wasn't working properly. It's the easiest way to say that. So I had to kind of kickstart my nutrition and everything. And But to answer your question, you know, two things that I found, at least for myself, is I kind of went back to what I enjoyed even 10 years ago, but more as a kid was playing sports and being active and working out and sweating and doing all those, those things because I was always an athletic kid. And I kind of got away from that as an adult because, like you said, responsibility and you sit in front of the screen all day. And if you don't prioritize, give yourself that time in the morning or the evening or whenever to go for that walk or, you know, lift those weights or go play racquetball with your buddy, it's probably not going to get done. And that's exactly why I was in the hospital in 2021. So I realized pretty quickly to prevent from being in the hospital again, I really need to get back to A, what I enjoy and B, what's going to move the needle for um, the health and the, the nutrition side as well, which I dove in. And then the second part, or the second answer to that question, I would say is um, I started talking to more people, like just being more open about issues that were going on, you know, with close friends, um, obviously my wife, my family, and just let them know and, you know, ask them questions. Hey, have you ever experienced anxiety or stress? Cause I know we all, we all probably have. And then just kind of dive in from there and say, great, I think I'm, you know, maybe experiencing something like this. Um, and it just opens up the conversation to whoever you're speaking to for them to share, for them to kind of help you and guide you if they do have that experience or just to listen and, you know, kind of be a sounding board. Cause I think before that I was kind of more like gritty, I'll figure this out. I'll, you know, I'm stressed, but I'll, I'll work through it. You know, that kind of thing. And I think a lot of business people, entrepreneurs are, are kind of like that, but yeah, I think relying on the people that are close to you in your community and in your, your inner circles and opening up, that was really helpful for me as well. Well, we talked about in one of the other previous episodes about masterminds, right? And how important it is to have that sounding board of other individuals that are experiencing maybe not the same experience, but similar experiences, right? That can give you some feedback, give you some suggestions, give you some help as needed based on kind of where you are. So I would recommend going back, folks, and, and checking out that episode as well, where we talked about the importance of masterminds. And that's where we're so excited to, to have each other, right? I mean, we consider ourselves, just the two of us, as a, a little mini mastermind where we try to help each other uh, get through, navigate some of the stressful situations, this entrepreneurial journey, trying to figure out how to navigate uh, the different things that are going on out there in the world, even nutrition. You've taught me a lot about nutrition because I'm focused on it not as much as you, but I'm very aware that how important that it is. Uh, I, I've lost both of my parents to cancer early in life for them. And so I'm like, I'm hyper conscious of just trying to pay attention to them, trying to take care of myself. And I think that's where the stress management comes in. Uh, the meditation comes in that we talked about 
uh, just the, the personal development piece on top of what your intake is, right? What you're bringing into your body and how that's so important. Maybe go, I would love for you just to maybe leave the folks here today with just maybe some resources or even some of the things that you've learned through your journey from 2021 to up till today. Because once again, I know you're trying different things all the time. Some things that worked, some things that haven't worked. Uh, maybe just help some folks that if they're at the beginning or even in the process of trying to figure out this whole uh, transformational journey in their, in their nutrition, um, maybe some places where they can go uh, learn some things for themselves. Yeah. So I think you kind of, you actually said it in your question there is just trying things and see if they work and see if they don't work. Um, and also not following, um, you know, exactly like if, you know, if you came to me and said, Hey, you should do this program. It's great. I can take that with a grain of salt and say, Hey, you know what? It might be a great program for you, but my goal is a little bit different right now um, in my entrepreneurial stage or my health stage or whatever that looks like. Not to say that it's not, you know, a great program, but you do have to make sure that the, um, the advice that you're getting and the advice that you follow is aligning with your goals because I've lost focus in the past, especially with health because the health is so polarizing. Um, you know, there's, there's this diet, there's that diet, they eat this, don't eat that work out at this time in the morning. And, you know, and, and I just, I would jump, I would say, all right, cool. This person said this, and now I'm going to try doing this diet and that diet, um, which is fine. As long as you're tracking what works for you and what doesn't for you, doesn't work for you. And then don't repeat that cycle of going back to that same, you know, that pattern. Um, once you find something that works for you, stick with it and then optimize it and maximize it. Um, so I think that would be a big lesson for, you know, your listeners is try out different things, you know, make sure you're getting advice that aligns with your goals from the people that care about you the most, not that want to sell you the most programs. Um, that's another thing <laughs> and just make yes, sure that, yeah, make sure that you're focused and you have the time to dedicate to whatever you're putting in front of you to achieve that goal. I wish there was a BS meter. You could just have somebody like they have to, to pass a, a BS meter, whether they're trying to just sell you something, <laughs> sell you the next thing, sell you the next fad versus trying to literally help you make a, a leap, right? In your journey. And that's where I know you through the child and error of trying multiple things. So it's like uh, you've shared with me multiple times of the things that you're doing, but they don't quite match up with what I'm trying to do for myself. Once again, it's not that I'm trying to be bad for myself. I do pay attention to what I'm intaking, but as far as like to follow the program that you're on would be completely against really what I want to do personally for my goals and where I'm at. And so that's where we help each other, but we don't, I don't force anything that I'm doing on you and vice versa, right? It's almost like support. I'm always curious because once again, you're always trying new things and it's like your own, your own, you are your own guinea pig, right? You're like, eh, I'll try this for a little while. And, but then you check the result. And if you're not getting the result that you want, you're quick to change, which is once again, for me to watch you do that, it's, it's actually, it's fun. It's fun to watch you grow and become that more and more all the time. So talk about the, the grit that it takes to keep going in this entrepreneurial journey. And because it, with your health too, right? Cause it's, it's similar, meaning the, the attitude, the mental uh, mindset that you have to have to keep going, to keep trying, to think that you're going to jump in and just change overnight. I mean, I wish that was true. That's going to probably show up in movies but or even television shows, but I don't think that's real life. Uh, that's been my experience, and I would assume based on our conversations that that's been your experience as well. Talk about the grit and the determination it takes to see yourself through towards a goal right? Setting a goal, but then working towards that goal and how important that is too. Yeah. The grid, the grid is tough. I mean, that's where, you know, the rubber meets the road and you really have to, to do all the work, you know, coming up with the, the plan and the goal and what it's going to feel like when you achieve that goal. That's the easy part, right? A lot of people talk about, you know, being the visionary of what this business is going to do or what this company is going to you know provide for their customers. That is, you know, the creative part of it, which is, which is great. Uh, it's fun to write down, but then you write down all the steps that you need to do to even get to say stage one of that game plan or that business plan. It's, it can be overwhelming. So that's where I think you really need to, you know, kind of break down the steps and, and find out what exactly you're good at and what do you want to do? Uh, and that's why, you know, I know partnerships, um, especially in business and in personal life, just very similar. 
Um, be careful who you partner with. Um, and if you're with somebody who is exactly like you, um, especially in business, I'll talk about business. It's, it's not really going to work. It can work. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's, um, forbidden or anything, but usually if somebody is the visionary and the other person is the day to day, the driver doing the actions, hiring, you know, the people or the VAs or whatever, those types of people usually work well together because they have complementary skills. I've had friends and business partners where we kind of have the same skill. Um, it's fun hanging out and talking about the vision or maybe doing the day to day. But one of those things is not going to be done as well as it should be or as the other one is going to be because nobody's really proficient in that skill. So that's kind of where the grit comes in. You really have to understand and kind of admit to yourself like, hey, I'm really not good at that. Um, I don't want to be good at that. It doesn't really appeal to me. That's where I need to find somebody who is, um, is better at that skill than me, who wants to partner up. Or if I can hire that service out, if that's within my budget, that's, you know, another thing that I can do. But you really have to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I'm really not good at sales. I don't like sales. I don't want to do sales. Why am I going to train myself to do something that I'm probably not going to like? Uh, it's not going to drive me. I'm not going to be happy. And the results are probably not going to be there because of all the things I just mentioned. I'm not happy. I don't want to do it. And I'm just kind of forcing myself through it. Um, so it kind of just goes with, you know, turning your passion into a profit, really. Um, mm. And trying to do that as best as you can. It's not as easy in the beginning. But once you do get there and you actually wake up in the morning and say, all right, cool, I get to do this today. And I get to be on Randy's podcast today. It's going to be a cool day. Then, you know what? You're stepping in the right direction. Love that. So that's kind of where I'm at personally, right? I'm trying to figure out what my skill sets are. So I understand business. I want to be in business. I want to do business, right? But at the same time, there are pieces of running and operating a business that I'm not necessarily as passionate about or that I'm even as good at as other people. And I would say you and I are probably very similar to that. It's like the skill set that you have is different than mine. And I think that's probably why we get along is because mm -hmm. we can complement each other with some ideas for each other with our businesses and with our lives that, yeah, if you if you're thinking the same way or doing the same thing, or your skill sets are the same, if you're jumping into a partnership, just because you think the other side is going to be rosy, if you haven't vetted that partner very well, that could lead to some challenging times. I've, I've seen that multiple times, which is why I'm usually pretty cautious about who I, I'm trying to get into business with as well. It's not that I'm not seeking, I'm trying to find a, a compliment to me with my skill sets that I can help drive the business forward. But based on, like you said, I, when I get up every day, I want to enjoy what I do. Is it going to be fun? I don't like to use the word fun because there's times of it that will be fun, but at the same time it's work, but I want it to be relatively enjoyable. Like doing the podcast right now, obviously this is my one, probably my main gig, right? This is what I do. I create and edit and produce and publish and promote and just do the podcast, but it's, it's creating a skill set that I'll be able to help with other people and other things moving forward, which has been a lot of fun for me, but it takes the grit to get up and do the process. So it's like, I've been up since about 6am this morning. I know I went on my walk for about a half an hour, but the other three and a half hours or four hours so far has been working. I've been, I've got have an interview right after this one with you today, Greg, that I've had to do some research on. And I've, you know, I mean, so it's, it's work, but I actually enjoy it, which makes it uh, more enjoyable for me. Yeah. And that's so the fun part. Yeah. Please continue. If you've got more to add, please. Yeah. I was going to say, I have an example actually from yesterday um, where, um, you know, me and my partners, um, we bought some real estate and we were trying to figure out a solution to this one problem. And, <clears throat> um, you know, there's three, there's four of us total. Um, so we basically needed to find some boots on the ground in, um, in a different state. So we're all in, not in this one state. So yesterday was actually a really cool day because I feel like I accomplished a lot. Um, and I was just hopping on the phone with two or three other investor buddies that I knew were in that area or in that, that niche and just asking them questions, um, kind of going back to the who, like, who am I going to call about this question? And it was great because I was learning a lot about a situation that I've never been in before. And just kind of moving the needle forward and just trying to get resources for my team to use who are boots on the ground there. And like you said, that's one of my um, skill sets is my network and networking. So I knew exactly who to call. I knew 
you know, it was just fun scheduling the, the calls. You know, I'll call you in 30 minutes. Cool. Knock them one off the list. It was great catching up with them and seeing what they're up to as well and see how I can help them. But yeah, I was lying in bed last night. I was like, I, I really feel like I accomplished a lot today. And it was more than, you know, the previous couple of days just because I had a lot of fun doing it. And I felt like I was, I don't know, kind of like in the zone of like, all right, this is what I'm, this is what I'm good at. And it's fun connecting with other people and not only asking them for their help, but also finding out, you know, what are they up to? You know, what can we partner on? Um, what are they seeing in the market? Just, you know, just kind of connecting to the community like we were talking about. So it's a great example from literally yesterday. And I've told you before, and I'll tell you now that that is 100% one of your skill sets is your ability to communicate, to organize, to uh, get involved with, right? Other people in the process and, and moving the needle forward through that. Yeah, 100%, man. That's, and it's not that I'm bad at that. I'm just not as good at it. Watching you do it, I'm not as good at it as you are, which is inspiring for me to get better. But at the same time, it's, you know, I don't need to compete with you at all. Right. But at the same time, so if I need something, it's like, who do I need to call? Well, I need to call Greg because Greg knows who to call. <laughs> you know, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's your skill set, and you wouldn't have a problem helping me if I needed that help. And I guess that's the lesson I want people to hear that are listening to this today. It's, and you said it just a second ago, it's the who, not how it's who do you need to get into your world that will complement your skill set. So mine is more creative. I love being creative. I love as I mentioned with the podcast, I love launching this podcast. I love getting on here and not, we literally didn't know what we were going to talk about. And it's like, okay, yeah, let's hit record. Let's see what happens. That doesn't bother me. Let's go. Right. Cause to me, it's creative. I love using my mind to think about uh, images and then bringing them those things to life. Uh, so anyways, that's more of my skill set. So marketing, uh, even copywriting, I enjoy all of those things. Those are the things that I enjoy doing. So I'm trying to take my skill set and partner with this whoever, right? Whoever I can find that will need or would compliment me on the other other side. The things that I'm not as good at. Once again, it's not that I can't do them. I'm just not as proficient. Um, very similar to what the things that you are in in as well, Greg. So I, that's why I appreciate the conversations that we always have because you're always teaching me. You're always teaching me uh, so many great things, which is which is so cool. As are you. Appreciate it. So let's pivot a little bit. I know one project that you're working on and it's a passion project. It's also a passion of mine, which is another reason why I'm excited to have this conversation today, but it really comes down into the world of understanding. And we talked about becoming an entrepreneur, a uh, business owner, but that subject of financial education and how important that it is. If folks are wanting to succeed in the current economy, the way it's set up in today, 2024, moving forward, they've got to get some basics. They need to understand basics or basic terminology because business, entrepreneurship, success in general has a terminology that if you're not familiar with the terms and the, and the phrases and those type of things, you're setting yourself up for failure. And it's not from lack of trying. It's just lack of knowledge. So the, this passion project, uh, I would want to dive into that. Uh, it's all about financial education, but it's early stage financial education, which is super a, a big passion of mine as well. I love trying to help folks understand. Uh, so it's like the one phrase that's going around all over the place now, which is fascinating to me because I've been f focusing on and studying this subject for years, probably close to a decade or more, which is the term inflation and even what inflation is and why is it happening? And how can you actually profit from inflation versus being swallowed up by it by, like most people are, which is unfortunate because once again, it's just an information knowledge issue. If you understand how, how it works, you can use it to your advantage versus, versus having it working against you. But anyways, let's, let's jump into this passion project. You see, that's, yeah, we start talking about this, man. I'll go on and on and on for days because I just <laughs> love talking about it. But it's, it's your project. Let's, let's dive into that. Tell me about, it's actually a book. Tell me about the book. Um, and let's talk about some financial education. Maybe uh, bring this one home and, and uh, wrap this one up talking about this piece. Yeah, thank you. I like the early stage education. That's a good way to phrase this. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I wrote a book. Um, this is my first one that I've done on my own, which is really cool. So uh, a little bit nervous, very out of my comfort zone. Uh, and that's, you know, 
a lot of it has to do with um, just understanding the process, going through the process by myself. Um, I did have a coach and everything, so that was very helpful. But yeah, the book is called uh, Teen Money Mindset. And like you said, Randy, it's basically about, um, you know, early stage financial education for, you know, teens and children even, uh, and more importantly, for the parents of the teens as well. Uh, I know it doesn't say that in the title, but um, the goal of this book is to not only have the teen read this book and like you said, understand financial terms, literacy, and put those into action, but also have the parent help the teen, maybe read the book with the teen and, you know, kind of put together a game plan, put those action items together. They can work on them together. The parent can obviously um, dive into those, those areas a little bit further. Cause you know, what I wrote was uh, more foundational. It didn't go into a lot of detail, which is, um, I did that on purpose just because, and one of the reasons why I wrote the book is I know I was very fortunate to grow up in a household where finances um, weren't necessarily taught. You know, I mean, my dad or mom didn't really sit me down and teach me, you know, budgeting 101 and all that kind of stuff, but they indirectly and directly, they just led by example. So um, later on when I was in my dating phase, I, you know, I was dating this one girl and I realized that she didn't have that luxury. Um, her parents just were not aware of much in the financial world of balancing a checkbook and budgeting and everything. And, um, and it was just really eye opening because to me, that was my normal of at least understanding the basics of, you know, how a credit card works, how all these things work that um, I just kind of took for granted growing up in my own household. Um, and the ironic thing is I don't have any children, but the, I still want to pass this on to the next generation because um, you know, these are things that are not taught in schools these days. They weren't taught back in when I was in school. So um, that's why, like I said, I was very fortunate to, you know, have parents that really um, led by example and just, you know, showed me the way. Um, so I really want to pass that on to teenagers now and the parents of teenagers just to set those teens up for you know, future success. So you're right. It's not taught in schools. I'm self-taught. Uh, my parents, I didn't have that luxury either. Uh, so to no fault to them, they, they just didn't know either. Mm -hmm. They weren't taught, which meant that they didn't teach me. Fortunately, I was able to get self-educated, went down the road of reading plenty of books, watched and listened to many, many different programs. So a lot of my education has been self-taught, but then I've also tried to put some things in place. As I mentioned with even just the term inflation, I've been studying inflation for a decade or more. I've been talking about it at least that long. So for it to be happening in today's environment doesn't surprise me one bit because I, you, you just understand, you understand what's going on. Inflation might be a little bit of a higher level topic. I don't know how deep it goes inside the book, but at the same time, is there, can you go over maybe some key takeaways? If who's this book for, you mentioned is for, it's like early stage uh, people that are just getting out into the, in, into the work environment. Right. But it also could be for parents and, and older people as well that might not be exposed. Can you talk about some of the key bullet point takeaways that they would find uh, within the book that will literally change their life? If they can catch the pass that you're throwing, really give it some thought and then start going down the rabbit trails of, of self-education within the financial education piece. I'm telling you their whole life can be completely different. Yeah. I'll leave it to you. Is there anything else that, that comes to mind when I ask that type of, of a question? Yeah. I mean, like we said earlier, it all comes down to mindset. So um, that's why I have it in the title. I didn't want to leave that out because it's so important for everybody to understand how important mindset is for any goal they want to achieve, whether it's financial or, or otherwise. Um, so that's chapter two in my book, the, the money mindset magic. And that's just exactly what we're talking about is just um, understanding, first understanding the terminology, but under, then understanding, you know, the mindset to have the abundant mindset versus the scarcity mindset, right? Um, and then other things in the book, you know, we talk about um, obviously building credit, the importance of building credit, how to do that, some basic things like budgeting, which I think is, I mean, even, even as an adult, I think we should all have a budget that, you know, we stick to and don't go over, or if we do go over, we kind of review and figure out why. Um, and then the last two I'll mention is one we kind of talked about already, but turning your passion into a profit. Um, I know a lot of, you know, kids these days, there are people on YouTube and everything. They're always talking about side hustles and, you know, really finding that job or that career that they're passionate about, not just that it's going to make them a lot of money. It could be both. 
Um, but there's a lot of talk and chatter around that passion before profit. And then the last thing, you know, in the book is going to be the, the map, right? Kind of what we talked about a little bit earlier of making those decisions, taking the advice that you want to take and mapping your own future, whatever that looks like for you. Um, if it's to make millions of dollars and live in a mansion, that's great. If you want to, you know, if money's not really important to you, you still have to understand these fundamentals to run a household, run a budget, plan for retirement, but then map out your future, whatever that looks like uh, for you and your family or whatever that, um, you know, however you want to kind of spin that. So, um, so again, yeah, this book is for teens, it's for adults, it's for, you know, kids in college. Um, and it's also for parents who, you know, like you said, you know, not everybody knows this stuff, so it's not their fault. It's just, we, we only know what we know. Uh, so yeah. So check out the book. I think it's a be a great resource for a lot of people. Love it. Love it. So I want to, want to congratulate you. I know this has been a project in the making for several months, obviously the writing, the editing, the, uh, all of the format, just all the stuff that goes along with producing a book. So congratulations on that, on getting to this point, right? Cause it's about ready to launch. When is the, the launch is coming up within the next week or two, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Yeah, it should be end of June. I don't know the exact date, but end of June, beginning of July, it should be available on Amazon which is will probably coincide with the launch of this episode. I will probably launch this episode very close to, if not right after the launch of the book. So we will have all the links in the show notes for people to go out and get the book, right? Uh, digest it, read it. If you have questions, you can reach out to Greg. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me as well. Uh, as I mentioned, I've uh, studied a lot of investing and how the banking system works and what inflation actually is and interest rates and what that means and the Fed. And <laughs> anyways, terms that are probably a little bit more in depth. But at the same time, if those are questions that you have. I would be more than happy to try to have those conversations with you. And I think Greg would as well, moving forward. Uh, where will be the best places for people to grab the book? Will be the normal, the normal places, or do you have anything uh, coming up special with the book at all? With lunch? So it's going to be on Amazon. And depending on when this podcast is released, there will be, I think, three or five days where you can actually get it for free. Hmm. So the timing is, like you said, with formatting and all that stuff, I'm still trying to figure out those dates. But Go on Amazon, check it out. If it's available for free, definitely download it. It's a free resource. I just want to get this book into as many hands as I can. So, so yeah, check it out on Amazon. I think that's the best place to find it at this point. So it'll be a, a hard copy book, but you're saying that the free version will be a, a digital download? Yeah, so there's going to be a paperback, uh, I believe a hard copy, and then an ebook as well, like a Kindle version. So they can download the Kindle version for free during that promotion. During the, the first three to five days? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you, you just need to communicate with me what that is or what that will be as you get closer to that launch date. And then, yeah, I will co you know, I'll try to get this episode as close to those dates as possible. So that way, yeah, if people are listening to this in real time, when this launches, you should have the ability, once again, I'll have the link in the show notes where you can go to Amazon and potentially download the book for free. And even if it's not for free, I would highly recommend that you get in proximity to Greg, uh, his knowledge, his wisdom, uh, his associations, meaning the, his network of folks that we talked about that today as well. It's super valuable. And if you can get yourself around people like Greg, I'm telling you, your life will, uh, it'll get better. It'll get better in every area and every aspect of your life. So definitely go out there. Teen money mindset. Say that again, teen money mindset. I love it. Yeah. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate it, man. That's awesome. Any last parting words of wisdom, Greg? We, I think we've shared a lot today. Uh, we jokingly said that we didn't know exactly what we were going to talk about. We knew we wanted to talk a little bit about the book, uh, but at the same time, the topics that we shared, I, you know, we kind of weaved in some uh, mindset with being an entrepreneur, talked about some meditation practices. We talked about some health and wellness practices, but man, is there anything else that, that kind of sticks to you in your mind as far as something you want to share with the folks as we wrap this one up today? Yeah, I was just going to say, hopefully we've shared, you know, some good information, like you said, about mindset, entrepreneurship, and you know, reach out to us if we can be one of those who's that answers your question or gives you advice that you may or may not take. You know, we're happy to do that. Um, we love connecting with with other you know entrepreneurs, um, just other people in general. So don't be don't be afraid. 
don't be afraid, folks. Uh, take us up on that. Uh, the links to to uh, get connected with me will be in the show notes, and I'll make sure Greg has or I have Greg's information in the show notes as well. And you can also pick up the copy of the Teen Money Mindset uh, in the show notes as well from Amazon. Man, Greg, I appreciate you hopping on here with me this morning. Uh, as always, the, the conversations that we have they're just fun for me. Uh, every now and then, we just love to say, "Hey, let's hit record. Let's see what we can come up with." And as always. Uh, we can fill up about an hour's worth of time <laughs> relatively easily. And it's just, uh, it's always super fun. So I just appreciate you taking your time. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So folks go out there and focus on being great. Just understand that we are all facing challenges every single day. Uh, all of us. So anybody that is portraying this life of just bliss 24, seven, 365, I would question that. <laughs> From my own personal experience, right? We can have ups, we can have downs. What I've always tried to teach my kids is that that life is like a roller coaster, right? You're going to have really highs and you're going to have some lows. It's the navigation piece in between both of those, right? Keeping your emotions in check. We talked about meditation today and I love how Greg talked about, and I'm going to think about that next time I'm on, on, I'm on my next walk and trying to treat it like a, a meditation uh, practice for myself but really get control and work towards winning within. That's one thing that I like to say within the podcast. You've got to get focused on what's going on inside of your own mind, inside of your own emotions. And once you get some clarity of what that is, and it's going to be an ever going process, it's never going to stop. But what I'll tell you is that when you can start the process and getting some clarity of those things from within yourself, that's when your exterior world is going to start changing for the better. And that's where it becomes a lot of fun for myself and I think for Greg as well. So as I mentioned, go out there, focus on being great. I appreciate your time and attention today. If you found this valuable, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate that. Anything you can do to help me spread the message of the Rich Mind Podcast, I would greatly appreciate that. And you can also head over to your podcast platform of choice. Leave us a, a review. I would love a, a five-star review if you feel like it's warranted, uh, but obviously some feedback. I always want to try to improve uh, trying to bring in on as many great guests as I possibly can with mixed in with some solo episodes there as well. So any feedback you have, I would greatly appreciate that as well. So go out there, have a fantastic day. And I look forward to coming back with another fantastic guest or even a solo episode coming very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.